Volkswagen Ardian 2.0 TSI 280R Line 2017 Review. Petrol power does a little more for VW's new flagship than diesel, but the Ardian remains short of a selling point in a competitive class. What is it? This is the top-of-the-range petrol version of Volkswagen's new top-of-the-range fastback executive saloon, the Ardian. And top-of-the-range or not, it's got a reasonable shot at outselling its diesel counterpart, not least because that's not saying a great deal in the wake of the dieselgate scandal. Also, however, because it qualifies for benefit in kind, BIK, company car tax at a lower percentage rate than its diesel range mate. Seeing as Volkswagen is highly likely to sell the car for less than the £40,000 threshold for pound 450 a year premium road tax. It also remains to be seen whether there will be any significantly cheaper versions of the Ardian offered in UK showrooms. This model gets four motion four wheel drive as standard, as well as a seven speed twin clutch automatic gearbox and is powered by the same EA888 2.0-liter turbocharged engine you'll find in wide use across the Volkswagen Group. In the Ardian, it produces a Golf GTI beating 276 bhp and gives a 0 to 62 miles per hour acceleration time of which many modern hot hatches would be rightly proud. The Ardian will be offered to British buyers in two trim levels, Elegance and R-Line with the latter getting lowered sport suspension springs to match its standard adaptive dampers. Our test car is in the latter trim. What's it like? As a rational proposition, the Ardian has plenty going for it, just as we reported last week of the diesel version. Style-centered executive options like this aren't usually so roomy, and interior quality and equipment sophistication is good. It's as the dreaded emotional purchase that the Ardian's case begins to unravel, because, to these eyes at least, it's certainly no style icon, and neither does it merit a place amongst the most engaging driver's cars in this part of the executive saloon market. The engine walks Volkswagen's practiced line between hushed refinement and sporting aggression. It's hushed at low speed and at a cruise, getting a little bit noisier no doubt with help from the car's stereo speakers, in sport mode. It's always matched very carefully to the automatic gearbox, allowing shifts to be delivered in a timely and smooth fashion. With more than 1,600 kilograms to haul, and slightly less torque than it commonly develops in the Volkswagen Group's latest round of cheaper performance cars, the 2.0-liter turbocharged engine doesn't feel desperately potent but it is typically flexible, responding keenly to the accelerator at all times and not feeling at all prescriptive about where within the rev range it's willing to knuckle down. And so, like the diesels, the Ardian petrol's performance feels brisk rather than fast, but nevertheless quick enough to command its place in the outside lane of the Autobahn. Our line trim sport suspension makes for a negligible improvement to the car's ride and handling. There's a marginal sense of being more closely and consistently in touch with the surface of the road than in the elegant trim diesel we drove, but at no point do the adaptive dampers give you the taut, settled body control needed in order to make the Ardian feel truly sporting. In sport mode, you'll find the car's motorway ride is simply slightly differently jiggling to that of the diesel, while its optional 20-in wheels thump and crash a little over sharper intrusions just as those of the diesels do. The Ardian steering is fast-paced and its handling is a touch more agile than those of its range mates, but the former remains short on weight and connected feel and the latter still fails to really engage its driver much. Should I buy one? If you want a fast yet refined medium-sized executive car, and moreover if you like the Ardian's reserved, alternative identity within a part of the car market that includes more obvious options such as the Audi A5 Sportback and more seductive, exciting ones such as the Alfa Romeo Giulia, sure. But those seem some yawningly large caveats to me. You can't help but feel that Volkswagen is replacing a very handsome car in the old CC with one that looks smart but not beautiful, and competitive with the established premium brands in most ways except the ones likely to really make you want one. For buyers looking for a really stirring option here, 
all may not be lost, Volkswagen high-ups claim that a six-cylinder engine does fit in the Ardian's engine bay, and that they've got a prototype running with such an engine. Whether anyone will be interested enough to make that car a reality, though, remains to be seen, be seen. Skoda Octavia VRS 245 DSG 2017 Review The new range topping Skoda Octavia VRS is pricey, but it's the most rounded and involving version yet. What is it? Skoda knows its place in the Volkswagen Group hierarchy. While colleagues at seat, Volkswagen and Audi have a license to push higher up the performance hatch food chain. The Czech brand stoically champions its principle of putting value first. That means that its VRS performance sub-brand has been neglected of late, with Fabia versions X despite a strong presence in top-level rallying and rumored plans of a superb VRS shelved in the wake of Dieselgate. The only car in Skoda's current lineup that's allowed a high-performance variant is the Octavia hatchback. As our earlier drive of the facelifted VRS showed, it's a creditable car but lacks the dynamic finesse its rivals offer. Now a new range topper has joined the lineup looking to address that. Previously the limited run Octavia VRS 230 sat at the top of the pile, but for the facelift it has evolved into the VRS 245, with 242 bhp, which will not have a limited production run and is available in hatchback and estates forms. Updates over the regular petrol VRS model, which is the same output as the outgoing VRS 230, include work on the turbocharged 2.0-liter petrol engine, which gets a new turbo, oil pump, injectors, manifold, timing chain, fuel pump and pistons. As a result, 227 bhp becomes 242 bhp and 258 pounds foot of torque becomes 273 pounds foot. On the outside, there's some black detailing and massive, bullying up 19 in alloy wheels, as well as, importantly, and just like the earlier 230, an electronic differential on the front axle and a new 7-speed dual clutch automatic transmission all of which command a premium of 2,500 pounds over the standard VRS. What's it like? The general flavor of the car is not dissimilar to the usual VRS qualities we're accustomed to. All of the positive traits remain, a flexible ride with a pleasant, well-built cabin and truly cavernous space. The boost in power is only subtle and shaves just a tenth of a second off the car's 0 to 62 miles per hour time, now 6.6 .6 seconds, so it still feels free revving and powerful, if a little slow to build up the pace from low revs. It's also a little less impressive in the grand scheme of this segment now that other hot hatches are pushing the 300 bhp mark with all-wheel drive setups at a similar price bracket. But the biggest dynamic difference over the rest of the VRS range comes as a result of the EDIF. The VRS 245 is noticeably better at putting down its power out of corners than the standard VRS, it will still understeer, but not to the extent the standard model does. The agile front end is only let down slightly by steering which, although precise, light and quick, doesn't offer much feel and robs the driver of some enjoyment. Eco comfort, normal and sport drive modes are available via a VRS button on the center console that alters the steering, throttle response and gear shifts. In sport, the car really livens up and the upgraded exhaust that the 245 gets sounds great, if a little artificially enhanced, while an individual mode lets you mix and match settings. Adaptive dampers are standard and help to soften the ride at a cruise or firm it up when pressing on but even in comfort the suspension is still firm, although not quite as jarring as that of the Ford Focus Street. 
Also newly available with the VRS245 is a 7-speed DSG, as opposed to the 6-speed unit for the rest of the range. Like the 6-speeder, it shifts quickly and calmly during regular driving while becoming more aggressive in sport, but it can be slightly hesitant on kickdown. The extra ratio means that the engine is not only more powerful but also more efficient, acclaimed 42.8 miles per gallon combined in the 230 becomes 44.1 miles per gallon in the 245, and it makes cruising even more refined and relaxing than before. And underneath it all, it's an Octavia. It gets a solid driving position with loads of adjustability and great visibility out of the cabin a top-notch touchscreen infotainment system, which now gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, and it's generally massive and practical inside. It's a thoroughly commendable product that is now closer than ever to being as entertaining as it is practical.